going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Rockport, Texas, and we're going to take a look at this Heartland Bighorn Traveler. This is a really cool fifth wheel, and what's nice about it is that it falls in the price range that a lot of people might be looking for, but it comes with a lot of upgrades that traditionally you would only see on higher price units. So hang tight, I'm going to be right back. So before we take a look at that, check out this 24 HFC Sea Chaser Center Console Deep V boat. Twin Suzuki, four-stroke engines on the back. This thing's cool, but check this out. I've never seen that before. Little side hatch entrance to get into the boat off of a dock. That is really cool. And again, I've just never seen that before. Maybe I haven't been in the boating industry or I haven't looked at boats enough, but to see that is a pretty thoughtful and I don't think it would really take away from the structure of the boat at all, but that is very convenient. If you've ever had a boat parked next to a low dock and you try to crawl over the side, sometimes it can be a slip hazard, but putting a little access hatch like that can definitely make it easier, especially if you're shorter in stature and crawling over the side rails is a bit of a dangerous trek for you. Anyways, that's cool. Guys, let's take a look at the numbers on this Bighorn Traveler, because this is a pretty good size fifth wheel. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,000 pounds, and it has a cargo capacity of 2,310 pounds. Rides on 16-inch F-rated tires, and it has twin 7,000-pound axles. This does ride on a drop frame, which is nice. So a drop frame is going to give you extra storage, because it's not going to have the frame protrude into the body of the fifth wheel. Now, the Bighorn Traveler is similar to what a lot of manufacturers do, where they have the standard Bighorn model, just like Keystone Montana has a standard Montana, but then they have the High Country to be a slightly less expensive version of the Montana. In the case of Bighorn, the Traveler is a slightly less expensive version of a Bighorn. Now, when you look at this again, you still get the drop frame. It's a 10-inch I-beam drop frame, which is really nice. It gives you a tremendous amount of interior storage, which is also very nice. You still get the really thick baggage doors, and this one has some gas shocks to help you open it. Main reason they put the gas shocks there is to prevent it from hitting the slide because you can't flip it all the way up. This utilizes rack and pinion slides for the back and Schwintec slides for the front. It has this really, really small, I guess you could even call it cute little awning that goes between the two slides over the door. That's just very interesting, but it can come in really handy if it's raining outside. So that's really nice. Coming around, it has a second, much longer awning here towards the back. This rides on the Cree 3000 suspension system from Moride. And this also has F-rated tires. I do wish they would have put G-rated tires. It has the Level Up auto leveling system and the spare tire upgraded little rack on the back here that lets you pull the tire out off the side without having to crawl underneath. Now, one area where they save cost was by putting standard incandescent bulbs on the back of this. It is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. This is actually a consignment unit, so they're selling this as a pre-owned model. 50 amp connection on this side, Schwintec slide system on this slide back here. This has five slides. This is a huge, huge fifth wheel. Plus, you have this slide right here, which is going to be your kitchen slide. Because you don't see that vent system back here, it means it's going to have a residential refrigerator. Moving on, back your furnace, back your hot water heater. This is going to be the other side of your storage with all your connections. So there are all your connections. I do like how they seal this bay off from your storage because if you ever get water pouring out, you don't have to worry about it damaging something you might be storing in here. Again, thicker baggage doors. It's going to have 30-pound propane tanks, two of them, one on each side. Coming around, this has the standard pin box on the front. That's another area that they save some cost whenever you get into that lower trim model from the main one. So oftentimes on a big horn, you'll see an upgraded pin box, but because this is a traveler, that's one area that it shaves some cost off. And this is a 2018 or 19 model, I believe. Again, this is the 39 FL. Stepping inside, this is a front living room floor plan all carpeted up front. This is a big living room area and they put two sofas. So traditionally your front living room units are gonna have love seats, but this actually positions two sofas, which means when you fold these things out, it's almost the equivalent of having two queen size beds folded out. 
a lot of room up front. You're starting to see on newer models where they transition away from carpet and they put a linoleum floor down here. But 50 inch TV, lots of cabinets, fireplace, and then you have your theater seating right here. This does have the day-night roller shades, which is nice. You can see the little island here, which is really only accessible from the other side. But you can put stuff on top if you need to. Lots of countertop space, coffee station. There's your residential refrigerator, residential microwave. Lots of countertop space in here. A ton of it. Check that out. Nice dinette area. Again, all the day-night roller shades. Coming towards the back. You can see that the door, which is this interesting style mid-hinge door to give you a little bit of access room when you're coming up to it. Solid one-piece shower, which is nice. Porcelain foot flush toilet. And it's got a good amount of room over here on this side. So you definitely have some countertop space and you have a nice size bathroom. Plenty of ceiling height. You're probably talking about eight feet worth of ceiling height in here. Coming into the bedroom, this has a memory foam king size bed. I do wish they would have put the end tables on the end here as opposed to on the sides because to me that's kind of weird and it takes up some of the space you might want to use. You have about 13 inches of space there, about 13, 14 inches on this side. Opening up the closet. Yeah, pretty good sized closet space in here. And it's relatively easy to access. They give you plenty of room here. This is where your washer and dryer assembly would go. You can use it as a closet as well. And then you have more storage. There is a tremendous amount of storage in here. Lots of cabinetry, just all around. And then your second air conditioning system is up here. TV at the end of the bed. Lots of drawers. This is definitely designed to carry some clothing. I mean, you have a lot of cabinetry and drawers in here. Coming back out. This is a pretty cool floor plan. And it's one that's gonna cost less than a traditional bighorn for a couple reasons. First of all, the trim work. So you see some trim work here, like where the light fixtures are up here. But on a bighorn, you're generally gonna see much thicker crown molding. You're gonna see some molding that goes across the top. You're gonna to see other things trimmed out. You'll probably see whisper quiet air conditioning systems. You'll see a higher rated tire. There are some areas where they cut cost and cut weight in the Traveler version versus the standard Bighorn simply because they want to get you into a unit that still gives you a lot of the space, the amenities, and the things you're looking for, including the drop frame, the good Cree 3000 suspension system. It gives you a lot of great features, a lot of great space, and a lot of the amenities that you might want for about ten dollars to $15,000 less than its slightly higher price cousin. So the Bighorn is going to probably, for a unit like this, run about $70,000. MSRP would probably be closer to 100 or a little bit over 100,000, probably 110, and then you'd be able to negotiate it down to about 70 grand. This one's going to have an MSRP probably around 85 grand, and you'd be able to get into one of these for probably closer to 50 grand. So it's a significant savings over its cousin if you're willing to sacrifice some of the things that you might not need, like Whisper Quiet AC, higher rated tires, and upgraded pin box, things like that. Anyways, guys, this is a cool example of what you can get at a lower price range if you are willing to sacrifice some of the features, some of the trim work and things that the higher price models have. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.